We know that one of the most difficult things in life to do is say goodbye. And today we find ourselves both with Jesus and also with Paul as he's preparing to leave the island, the place of Miletus. He is saying goodbye to them, and he says, entrusting them or commending them to God. And Jesus, in a sense, is doing the same thing as he's entrusting and commending his disciples, his followers, to the Father. John gives to us here in this gospel and in uh, these few chapters around this point, as Jesus uh, is preparing to return to the Father, he gives us sort of this view of the lofty theology that John's gospel encompasses. And because of this lofty theology, John is depicted, or the gospel writer is depicted as an eagle. And we have the four um, gospel writers and the depictions here in the sanctuary. The eagle is right here, again referring to John, um, because it's sort of difficult to, to grasp uh, and wrap our, our minds around um, this relationship that Jesus has with the Father, as he says, being one with him. And this is the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Jesus is praying this to the Father. And we can see through this prayer the depths of love that he has for those that he's been with. And the depths of love that he has for them and commending them to the Father. We remember that Jesus loved not only with the divine heart, but with the human heart. And so as he ate with these men and women, as he ate with them and drank with them and walked with them and talked with them and taught them, shared those special moments of life with them. We know that in his humanity, this was a difficult thing now, knowing that he would be separated from them. He knew how close he would continue to be to them, but still, he's leaving them. And such is the case for Paul. In a sense, both of them have taught those who were with them everything that they could have taught them. And now, as they commend them to the Father, they also entrust them <clears throat> to the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I consecrate myself before them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. And they are consecrated in truth through the life that they live now in union with the Father under the Lordship of Christ and in the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit that is within them. It's a great act of charity that both Paul and Jesus do for those who follow them today. And so the question that remains for us today is how have we consecrated ourselves to the truth? Or do we live under this consecration? Are we mindful of this consecration, this being set apart for that ultimate glory that awaits us? As we prepare for Pentecost in just a few days, we pray for open hearts to receive once again this divine outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That we too may be renewed in our consecration and we may take up that calling, that commissioning that Jesus has given to us, that as he was sent into the world, so to this day and every day, we are sent as well.